Hey Moneymakers, I'm Kalila Reynolds and welcome to Taking Stock. We're bringing you all the latest business news and telling you how it will affect you and your money. Now remember to head over to my website, kalilareynolds.com and subscribe to our newsletter. You can click the link up here or in the description box below. I've also made it a whole lot easier to subscribe. So go on and click that link and it will take you straight to the newsletter page. Now, come on, let's get this money. First up, Guardian Holdings relisted on the Jamaica Stock Exchange three weeks ago, but Jamaican investors have been having a hard time getting their hands on the company's shares. Well, Guardian's parent company, NCB Global Holdings, is now freeing up 2 million shares in Guardian. They've issued a prospectus inviting investors to purchase at 795 Jamaican dollars each. We'll discuss with CEO of NCB Capital Markets, Stephen Gooden, and CEO of Guardian Holdings, Ravi Tawari. Officially open on May 31, but so far the interest is going quite well and we expect the, the issue to be to over, be oversubscribed. And the analysts swain on the latest market developments. What do they think about the Guardian offer? Even at the 790, I mean, that is at a PE of around 8.59. And so that is still very, very attractive, you know, when you compare it to other financial companies. Then, despite the global pandemic, 10 out of 12 manufacturing and distribution companies listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange are reporting growth in net income, ranging as high as 443%. But will they survive the rise in commodities prices? If we're in the middle of a pandemic and we can see them be so profitable, just imagine what the boom might mean for them once everything has kind of opened up a bit more. And over in the US, a cyber attack on the largest fuel pipeline, Colonial, caused a massive fuel shortage recently. At the pump, price were, prices were increasing. They were at around $2.99 per gallon, which is the highest that it's been since 2014. We'll discuss. But first, here's What's Hot, brought to you by Jamaica Money Market Brokers, your best interest at heart. The Bank of Jamaica says the economy could rebound as much as 8% this fiscal year, but that projection depends on strong recovery in tourism and related activities. Governor Bile said growth is likely to be spurred from a faster-than-expected pace of vaccinations and the impact of the economic stimulus in the U.S., Jamaica's major trading partner. However, projections are subject to change based on the developments of the pandemic. In the meantime, the bank says Jamaica's net international reserves remain healthy, amounting to $3.3 billion US dollars at the end of April. It said deposit-taking institutions, DTIs, are properly capitalized and their balance sheets are growing. Meanwhile, the central bank has kept the policy interest rate offered in overnight placements unchanged at 0.5% per year. The policy rate is one of the BOJ's main tools to control inflation. This decision was based on the Monetary Policy Committee's assessment that inflation will continue to trend within the bank's inflation target range over the next two years. The BOJ says it will continue to hold the rate, provided there are no threats to cause inflation to raise higher than its limit of 6%. The next policy decision will be announced on June 30. In related news, the price of goods and services fell in April. According to the Statistical Institute of Jamaica Statin, inflation fell by half a percent. A 40% drop in the heavily weighted category housing, water, gas, electricity and other fuels was the main contributor to April's decline. Lower electricity bills were responsible for the fall in the index. However, April's rate was tempered by slight increases in the food and non-alcoholic beverages and transport divisions. The 12-month inflation rate now stands below the BOJ's target range at 3.8%. Rock Mobile has been given the green light to operate as Jamaica's third telecoms provider. Cabinet gave approval for the company to be granted a license last week. Technology Minister Daryl Vaz gave the update during his sectoral presentation to Parliament. He says Rock Mobile is a wholly owned Jamaican company and is expected to achieve full rollout of service within two years. The launch date is also expected within 12 months of the license being granted. The government is developing incentives to encourage the use of electric vehicles. Minister Daryl Vaz, who also heads the energy portfolio, says the finance ministry has finished reviewing the fiscal regime to develop Jamaica's e-mobility architecture and will now seek input from his ministry. 
The incentives are part of efforts to ensure Jamaica does not become a dumping ground for fossil fuel vehicles, which some manufacturers are expected to discontinue by 2030. Supreme Ventures' largest shareholder, Zodiac Caribbean Ventures, will float a $8 million US dollar bond next month to refinance debt. Zodiac holds a 31% stake in SVL. Mayberry Investments is lead arranger for the offer. Mayberry CEO Gary Peart says that the company will refinance a bond that expires on June 30. The placement is being offered to accredited Jamaican and Caribbean investors at a fixed coupon rate of 7.75%. The bond matures in 2022 and will be secured with 102 million SVL shares valued at about $2 billion. What's Hot was brought to you by Jamaica Money Market Brokers, your best interest at heart. And when we come back, now's your chance to own shares in the Caribbean's largest insurance company, Guardian Holdings Limited. Find out if this investment might be right for you. Hey, money makers! you're not an official part of the family until you have your merch. Visit KhalilaReynolds.com slash store to order your t-shirt and your mask today. Let's get this money. This segment of Taking Stock is brought to you by Bulwark Insurance Agency. Insurance made easy. Welcome back to Taking Stock. NCB Global Holdings is selling 2 million shares in the Trinidad-based Guardian Holdings. Half of the shares are reserved for NCB clients, 400,000 for NCB staff and 600,000 for the public. The share price is 795 Jamaican dollars or 35.97 TT. The offer opens on May 31 and is scheduled to close on June 11. Joining me now to break it down, we have CEO of NCB Capital Markets Stephen Gooden and CEO of Guardian Holdings Ravi Terwari. Hi Ravi, hi Stephen, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Good to be here. I'm great. I'm great. And I always love how the technology brings us so close together. So Ravi, you're all the way in Trinidad and Tobago and we're able to still meet and still talk rather than having to fly. One of us fly to the other country, no? Well, I wish I could fly, but um, it's great that the technology allows makes these things possible. You, you know, yeah. you can't be personal touch, but, but this is great. It sure does. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. So both of you are here, of course, because we have this big uh, offer going on. Actually, we reached out to, to Guardian Group even before we knew that NCB was going to be selling some of its shares because as the new kid on the block, Ravi, or the not so new kid has returned, what, the prodigal <laughs> son? <laughs> the prodigal son has returned to the JSC. We wanted to, to give our viewers and our listeners an idea of who Guardian is, if you've been living under a rock and never heard of Guardian before, because you are a Caribbean giant. So before we come to you, Stephen, Ravi, just give us a sense of what Guardian is as a company. So Guardian Group is the biggest insurance group in the Caribbean. We operate in every English-speaking island. We are either the biggest player or the second biggest player. Um, we operate, we are also the biggest player in the Dutch Caribbean, Aruba, Curacao, St. Martin, and, and those islands. And we operate in every line of business. So we operate in life, health, pensions, mutual property, everything. Is there any affiliation with the Guardian Media Group? No affiliation at all. No, it, it's, it's just a similar name. Okay. All right. All right. So out of those things that you've listed, what is the, the big cash earner for Guardian Group? It is a mix. So we have three major centers of operation. That is Trinidad, Jamaica, and Curacao. And our main cash owners are our life companies. We have two of the biggest life companies in the Caribbean, which is Guardian Life of the Caribbean Limited in Trinidad and Guardian Life Limited in Jamaica. And we also have the biggest general insurance company in the Caribbean, which is Guardian General um, Insurance Limited, right? Uh, of which an, uh, an affiliate is Guardian General Jamaica. Um, and in Curacao, we have the largest composite insurer, so they do all lines of business, which is Guardian Fatu. 
So I'm taking a look at your financials as uh, in as disclosed in the prospectus that NCB sent out, and I see net income is up. And this, these are the audited financial statements for the 12 months ending December 2020. So despite the pandemic, you still grew net income, so top line revenues, and you also grew profits. So how has the pandemic affected Guardian? You're still getting that uh, same level of business, clearly more. Or is it that people, you find that people, because of the pandemic, need insurance and want insurance more? Well, it, it's, a, it's a combination. You would find that insurance is a pretty robust product because there, there are two types of business. There's savings business and there's protection business. And what tends to happen is when economies are functioning really well, insurance has a lot of savings business. When um, things are tough, um, for instance, during a pandemic or even uh, an economic downturn, people buy a lot more protection. And, but what is important is that as an insurer, you have a very well-trained distribution force, a sales force that can make the switch between savings products and protection products. So, so, so we saw that. But, but the most compelling thing that happened during the pandemic is we it really accelerated the rate at which we were able to switch on our digital technology to allow digital sales, digital processing, electronic sign-in, um, uh, automated underwriting. So that, that really um, served us well during these times. And so would you say the pandemic was more of a positive for the company than a negative? I, I wouldn't want to um pitch it in that language because the the pandemic has so much um human suffering but it has tremendously accelerated our pace of digitization and it has given us taken us years forward in public acceptance of a digital way of doing business uh, and so tell me now coming to jamaica and i soon come to you stephen why did guardian decide to come back to jamaica to list on the jsc after all these years Guardian is a Caribbean company. We, we are a pan-Caribbean company. So it is appropriate for us to be listed in all of the major markets. And add to that, the Jamaican Stock Exchange over the past perhaps 20 years has progressively become more and more dynamic. I, I'm very amazed at the level of awareness that exists in Jamaica, in the Jamaican public, about the value of equities, of equity investing. I'm impressed with the sophistication of the market, the amount of listing, how dynamic the market is. So we believe the Jamaica stock market is a tremendous market for Guardian to be listed on because there's such a depth of trades and understanding. And we believe that it will cause our, the value of our share price to be fully ref reflected on that market. And this brings us to you now, Stephen, because the first couple of weeks we saw Guardian on the exchange and there wasn't much trading, I think primarily because there weren't shares available here right. in Jamaica for people to right. buy. So there was demand, you see the queues there, people wanted to buy, but there was none available for sale. So is that why NCB has now stepped in to sell at least to free up some of your shares to the public? That, that, that's correct. So we have actually in the process of executing what I'd call phase two of the cross listing, right? So phase one is actually getting the company cross listed in the first place. Then phase two is getting shares into the hands of, of, of as many uh, Jamaican investors as, as possible, right? So what we have done is to uh, free up uh, less than 1% of our holdings in Guardian Holdings Limited, uh, 2 million shares. Uh, for sale on the Jamaican, uh, uh, Jamaican Stock Exchange. And the idea is to get it in the hands uh, of, of many investors uh, using the, the Go IPO platform. And that now would be a catalyst for greater liquidity levels on the market. So let's take just one step back. Describe the relationship between NCB and Guardian, the, the business relationship. Right. So, 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 uh, NCB Financial Group owns 62% uh, of Guardian Holdings, right? Uh, so so that, is, that is a relationship. And if you look at it within a group business lines uh, perspective, uh, uh, Guardian Holdings pretty much represents the insurance arm 
of the NCB Financial Group. Understood. So, Ravi, talk to me now a little bit about the the actual listing. So, in terms of, you said you're impressed with, you know, the the knowledge of equities in Jamaica, the level of trading, the activity that goes on here. But you do come to the Jamaica Stock Exchange as the second most expensive stock. And here on this show, some of our analysts have been saying that perhaps, Guardian, that you should have considered a stock split before coming to the Jamaican market. Was that something that was considered? It is something that we gave thought to, yes, whether we should have a stock split. And business is quite fluid. So we will make the, the um, appropriate decision um, you know, the appropriate time. And and uh, yeah, what we do could change from time to time. But we did give consideration to it. Um, with softy changes to the rules about the number of shares that um, can be owned and can be traded, it we don't see it as a particular issue at the moment. Mm, so, But it's something that's still on the table. It is always something on the table. Mm, what are your thoughts on that, Stephen, having more familiarity with the Jamaican market? Well, I mean, you, you, at the end of the day, you know, Jamaican investors like to, you know, like stocks that are trading at lower uh, uh, nominal values, right? But the reality is this. I mean, if you are investing $10,000 in a stock, whether you buy 10 stocks at $1,000 each or buy 1,000 stocks at $10 each, uh, it is the same $10,000, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so your dividends is the same in terms of you know total uh, receipt of dividends. Uh, your PE ratio is the same. All the metrics are are, are the same. So at the end of the day, it's more uh, 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 a behavioral thing more than anything else. It's like comparing nine dollar ninety nine with ten dollars, right? You know, there's that sort of difference. It's basically the same. Um, so so, but I do believe though uh, that the market has accepted or you know will accept uh guardian at this high level because at the end of the day the performance speaks for itself and i do believe that the jamaican market uh will have a better appreciation for high value stock i mean there are stocks overseas they talk about amazon that's trading at 3200 us they are about that's a little bit under half a million uh jamaican dollars they talk about tesla that is trading at the equivalent of around 90,000 Jamaican dollars. And these stocks are stocks that are well known to Jamaican investors and Jamaican investors track these stocks and these stocks perform well. So, you know, we just need to move from a mindset whereby a stock is cheap because of the, the nominal value, right? So, In a day, mm -hmm. what's the valuation? And if you look at Guardian, Guardian is actually one of the cheapest stocks on the stock exchange. Guardian is trading at, uh, a, you know, based on the prospectus, the shares are being offered at 8.4 times earnings, right? Uh, so that is the company's valued at 8.4 times its annual earnings, right? The average financial sector stock in Jamaica trades in the high teens, right? So although Guardian shares are being offered at 7.95, if you compare Guardian uh, stock price to its peers, Guardian is actually one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest stock on the exchange currently. Based on, on PE. I, that's a good point. Uh, but you mentioned a very important word, and that's performance. Ravi, tell me about the, the financial performance. And I know I highlighted the past year, 2020, and that you've grown. But let's look a little bit broader at perhaps the past five years, the past 10 years. How has Guardian grown over the years? we've had quite a dynamic part of growth. If you compare Guardian now, um, and 2021, to the company we were in at the end of 2015, so five years ago, it's two completely different companies. We have more than double profits over that time. We have significantly increased sales. Everything about the company has been on a part of, of, um, of growth. Um, we've changed out our technology. It's, it's, it's really been a phenomenal five years for the group. And, and we look forward to making the future if, even more um, brighter than it is now. Doubled in the past five years. Very impressive. To what do you attribute that rapid growth? 
A, a number of things. Five years ago, Guardian operated more or less as a federation of insurance companies. So we had all these in, uh, insurance companies across the Caribbean. They were all quite good companies, but there, there was so many um, redundancies uh, um, you know, among the companies. So what we did five years ago is we, we embarked on a program to, to do a few things, to greatly improve our technology so that we could bring synergies to bear we increase our level of uh, digitization and we start to spread best practice from company to company. So what one company did well, another company didn't do as well. We transfer the technology across companies. So what we did over time is we made all companies stronger. Then about two years ago, we, we started to make some even deeper changes resting on, on the foundation that we had built. So we had built a good technological foundation, but it, it was a, a consolidated foundation based on old technology. We went about a process of modernizing the technology. We took advantage of changes in the world of cloud-based technology, of data analytics, data science, modern interfaces. Um, so then that layer was added we also change how, how we, we, we manage because Guardian historically has been a very top-down company. So we set strategy and, and the staff carried it out. But, but we started to flip that on its head. Okay, We, we brought in a lot of um, consultancy into the group and we flipped it up on its head. We said, look, if we set a vision and direction, you from the ground up as, as, as the staff are empowered to, to tell us how best to implement it. And we will make the decisions about allocating resources and, and um, coordinating how we, how we rule out different things. And that has really served us well. I mean, we, 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 are, we have seen a tremendous improvement in productivity, creativity and innovation. There are a lot of investors here on the Jamaican market, and I guess investors generally on all markets who look for good dividend paying companies. So, so some people have that as their strategy. What is the dividend policy of Guardian? We, uh, we, we have a relatively um, consistent dividend. We, we, Guardian's policy is to, as best we can, maintain the level of dividends that we have paid with a steady growth in the amount of dividends paid. And, and, and that is what we aspire to do at the group level. So, so to bring a to try to bring a relatively consistent stream of dividends to our investors. Of, of, of course, you, you know, you, right now we're in a hiccup because of the pandemic and all of that, but, but, but the Guardian policy is to create a stable stream of dividend flow for our investors. Well, I'm sure a lot of investors will be happy to hear that. Correct, and as a, correct. as a major shareholder, you would know about those dividends, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the dividends from Guardian. So coming back to, to the sale by NCB Group now of, its, of these 2 million shares. So you're making right. 2 million shares available, but some of them are reserved. Give us that breakdown. Right. So, so, so you know, Having offered these shares or offering, so having decided to offer these shares to the market, you know, we said to ourselves, you know, you know, why not, you know, reward the staff? Why not allow our clients to participate? So we actually have a reserve, a reserve pool uh, for our clients of 50%, right? Clients across the, the NCB financial group. And, you know, we have a very large client base as well we as well as a reserve pool of 20 percent of the amount for our team members uh both at ncb as well as guardian what's your anticipation for the take up of these shares no so 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 we 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 we, we so the, we we uploaded the prospectus on monday uh participation and interest has been very good so far uh, so I expect this to be uh, a success, right? Uh, we officially open on May 31, but so far the interest is going quite well, and we expect the, the issue to be to over be oversubscribed. 
Mm. Uh, explain also how it works. So there's been some some interest in, you know, now that we're cross-listed and there are not many companies that are cross-listed, JSC, TTSC. So now right. people might have some interest in participating in the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange or right. people in Trinidad may want to sell their shares on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. How does that work? Okay, so 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 it's, it's, it's fairly relatively easy. Uh, you can actually if you, you, you can actually open a stock brokerage account in Trinidad if you want to, you can buy shares there and you can transfer the shares uh, across exchanges. Uh, that process takes probably a week or less and have those shares available for sale here. Uh, and likewise, uh, Trinidad investors can open an account here in Jamaica and transfer the shares here uh, 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 for, for trading purposes, right? And you also have market makers that will sit in between, buy shares in one market and sell in the other market and vice versa. Uh, so it is a fairly easy uh, process. Um, you know, once you can navigate the transaction costs and the currency convergence and, 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 and so on, right? And that's one of the things that makes this uh, interesting, right? Because what's gonna happen now is that Guardian is gonna be listed on, 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 on both exchanges. Uh, if you look at, the level of trading activity as a potential as a percentage of the, the, the total the size of each market uh, the jamaican market is actually five times more active than the trinidad market if you look at the data over the last uh, two years so what's going to happen is that we expect to see much higher level of trading activity in the guardian shares here in jamaica and that will also influence trading activity in, in, in Trinidad. And, and I mean, if you are able to move shares across the markets, uh, that's great. Quite possibly we'll see that influence indeed. I know the intention wasn't necessarily to raise funds. NCB have enough money. <laughs> I think that the primary, the primary intention was to, to free up the shares so that people can, can trade it. But, but, you, but you will raise $1.6 billion from this if completely subscribed. Is there anything in particular those funds are earmarked for? Come on. So, so if we were actually doing a fundraising exercise, it would have been a much bigger figure. Right? <laughs> the, the objective of this, the primary objective of this is to create a market in, in GHL shares. It makes no sense to cross list and there's no supply um, on the market for trading. Right. Uh, so our clients that want to cross list, we always encourage them to make a block available upon cross listing uh for the the market that you're listing cross listing into right so at least you can get the liquidity levels uh, going uh when we looked at it you know i mean obviously as i said this is not a, a fundraising effort so we we wanted to just provide enough shares to get trading activity going you made a point earlier um in the interview that when it was cross listed you saw investors wanting to buy, but there was no supply. Mm -hmm. We stepped in to, to create that, 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 that supply. Uh, Ravi, yeah, mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier how impressed you were with the, the sophistication of the Jamaican stock market, equities market. Why do you think it hasn't translated to Trinidad in the same way so far? That's the million dollar question, right? Um, to, to be frank, I don't know the, the Trinidad stock market over time has become less dynamic. Um, as, I mean, it's it's not the market it was a decade ago. Um, so so it's 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 rather a difficult question. P part of the problem is is the Trinidad market went into a decline um, when, when rules were changed about the participation in the market by institutional pension plans. Okay, um, And that was done rather suddenly than, than perhaps being brought in over a period of time. And the, the, there was a certain amount of loss of confidence in the market because volumes became very thin um, almost overnight. And I don't know that Trinidad market has ever recovered from that um, to any great extent. Mm, mm, I see. Uh, Stephen, uh, NCB Cap Markets has applied for a brokerage brokerage license to operate in Trinidad. What's the update with that? 
Oh, so I, I would say that we expect to have that license in hand uh, before the end of our financial year. Our financial year ends uh, September uh, 30. Uh, so we, we expect to have that license in hand soon. We, we, we are very advanced with the application process. And um, we do believe, uh, you know, cross listings as well as uh, regulatory reform in Trinidad, we do believe that both those initiatives uh, will result in great activity on the, the Trinidad Stock Exchange. So you have seen where Massey Group has indicated that they want to cross this on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Right. I do believe that the cross listings uh, will stimulate some activity on the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange as well as uh, uh, changes made to their uh, SME market regime, which is equivalent to our China market. I think that will positively uh, influence market activity there. But you know, Ravi is right. Um, activity on the TTSC has declined over the years, but um, we, we are fairly optimistic um, in the future. And um, NCB is committed to developing our work with the various stakeholders in Trinidad to develop and deep the, the capital markets and the stock market specifically in Trinidad. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Ravi, for joining me. Thank you very much. And all the best when the offer opens on the 31st. Thank you very much. Take care and thanks for having us. All yes, right. thanks for having us. Well, if you're interested in this offer, you can download the prospectus. The link is in the description below. And it's a pretty short read, less than 30 pages. Up next, we've got your market recap and the analysts are standing by. This segment of Taking Stock was brought to you by Bulwark Insurance Agency. Insurance made easy. Time now for your market recap. Brought to you by Sagicor Investments. Think wealth, think Sagicor Investments. The Jamaica Stock Exchange declined, with the combined index losing less than 1%. 108 stocks traded across both the main and junior markets of the JSC for the week ending Friday, May 21, 2021. 45 advanced, 54 declined, and 9 stayed the same. Nearly 144 million shares changed hands on the Jamaican dollar market, totaling $1 billion. Fesco traded the most, taking up nearly 22% of market volume. The stock, however, lost $0.04 cents to open this week at $1.03. Sagicor Select Funds Financial traded at the second highest, with people buying and selling 12 million shares in the company. The stock lost $0.02 cents to open the week at $0.63. Cents. And Wigton Wind Farm Ordinary Shares rounded out the most traded, taking up 8% of market volume. The stock remained unchanged to close last week at $0.65. Cents. Now let's see who had the biggest gains. One three-eighth student living Jamaica variable preference stock price rose 45% to close last week at $7.90. Jetcon Corporation stock price rose nearly 22% to open this week at $1.06. And rounding off the biggest gains, medical disposables and supplies stock advanced nearly 18% to open this week at $5. On the losing side now, Portland JSX was the biggest loser. Its stock price down 31% to $7.12. First Rock Capital Holdings USD was second on the list, with its stock price down nearly 26% to open this week at $0.09 cents US. Rounding off the biggest losers, Lasco Financial Services, which lost nearly 19%, down to $3.20. Market Recap was brought to you by Sagicor Investments. Think Wealth. Think Sagicor Investments. This segment of Taking Stock, The Analysts, is brought to you by Ideal Portfolio Services. Welcome back to Taking Stock. I've got a team of analysts to examine the week in business. I'm joined now by Wealth Advisor at Ideal Portfolio Services, Dwayne Taylor, Research and Strategy Analyst at Sagicor Investments, Jody Ann Aris, and let's welcome financial coach, founder, and CEO of Profit Jumpstarter, Keisha Bailey. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, Jodian. And we have a new face this week, Keisha Bailey. Welcome. Hi, Kalila. Hi, Kalila. So, Keisha, before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself, since you're new to the program and new to our viewers. Sure, sure. So, I'm Keisha Bailey. I'm the CEO of Profit Jumpstarter. And really the mission of the company is to 
teach people how to achieve financial freedom by learning how to invest in stocks. And so specifically what I do is walk people through a framework on how they can learn to invest in stocks and how they can follow this proven process to have continued invest, continued success with investing and achieve more freedom and stop trading their time for money consistently. I'm also a university lecturer. I teach with um, the Mona School of Business right now. And I have been in the financial industry for 17 years, um, managing money both locally and internationally. And you happen to lecture Dwayne <laughs> at the yes. moment. Dwayne is in one of your classes. Look at yes. that small yes. world. <laughs> small so Profit, Profit Jumpstarter is based here in Jamaica or in Canada? Because I know you, you have ties in Canada. Right. I'd like to think of Profit Jumpstarter as based in Jamaica, but available globally. So mm. with the virtual presence that's now pretty common, it, I'm able to reach persons all over the world, be able to teach them and empower them to take on investing for themselves. All right. Excellent. And you know, that's something that I absolutely support 100%. We're on the same yes. mission. We're, we're aligned. So I think you're a good fit for as one of our analysts this week. Glad to have you on. Well, let's Thank look you. at what's going on on the local markets this week, starting with Guardian. Guardian has cross-listed officially, but we've had a problem. There's been very little trading because there's not just not much stock available, not many people were selling. So here comes NCB to the rescue, freeing up some of their shares. Uh, they're selling 2 million shares to the public. That opens on May 31. Uh, Jodian, uh, what are you seeing with this offer? Is it something that people are very excited about or lukewarm so far? Do you know? Well, I think people are generally excited about Guardian when you look at the company itself and you look at the fundamentals. It's been a, it's one of the largest companies within the Caribbean. It's been growing. So you look year on year, there has been improvements in profits and revenue. And I think even, I think what made the main turn off for people is just the price that it is at. Um, but you know, as keen investors, we don't necessarily measure expense of our company based on the, dollar value but you know we look at their price relative to earnings and when you look at that ratio it is actually a very good offer when you consider even at the 790 i mean that is at a pe of around 8.59 and so that is still very very attractive you know when you compare it to other financial companies so i think people do want to get in on guardian it's just the liquidity as well as you know the entrance price points even though it's not expensive it's still a big dollar figure for persons Right, right, right at 795. So we've been considering on this program in previous weeks whether Guardian should do a stock split. I just asked Ravi to worry about it from Guardian. He said it's not off the table. So who knows, it might be coming. Uh, Dwayne, what are your thoughts on, on Guardian's prospect? Uh, sorry, on NCB selling these Guardian shares? Uh, I think it's a, a solid move, Kalilo. Uh, I think based off of the fact that, you know, it hasn't really been trading since uh, the cross listing, you know, this was, I, I think this was more of a calculated move than, than we knew. I think they anticipated, uh, that bit of friction in terms of, you know, the trades being up and thus, you know, offering this to the public will definitely stimulate some trades. I think the only, I think the only drawback that we have, yes, is the price because a lot of our investors locally, and I'm, and I'm speaking from the individual investors, not so much, you know, the key investors, but individual investors are so accustomed to having stocks that are below $100. I mean, when NCB skyrocketed to, to 200, that was a big deal in the market. So seeing a prospectus where, you know, one unit is worth 700 plus, you know, is definitely intimidating, but I still think that it's a solid buy. I think it's an introduction to, value investing rather than trading for just you know the short-term gains because this is a company that is valuable you know the cash flow the income statements everything suggests that everything is fundamentally sown within the company so it's definitely a solid buy and i think as as we progress towards the actual opening of it we'll we'll find that the shares are eaten up quickly by mm -hmm. investors yeah and on that point about the the stock price even if they were to do a stock split it's really just a psychological thing isn't it exactly. Keisha? yes <laughs> that's exactly what it would be because with a stock split what happens the price the actual 
shareholder wealth is unchanged. The price comes down, but the volume of units increases such that overall your wealth is unchanged. It becomes a bit more affordable from an absolute price perspective for investors, but however, and so it, it would be more persons being able to buy then at this lower dollar amount. However, I think generally this is a pretty good offer. NCB is stepping in to provide liquidity, saving the day on this new um, listing in the market. And so if we even dissect the issue, the, the listing, NCB still will remain the dominant shareholder. They've really released about 0.86 of their ownership. And so they'll end up at around 61% ownership coming from 61.97% not much change then in terms of their their um ownership rights available to the public is six hundred thousand shares the general public that is and so in terms of float that's a, a decent amount i would say for investors to take part in what i believe will be a very profitable or continuable in terms of profits for this company and so i really like this issue i like what ncb is doing i think it's a very good move on their part to inject liquidity in these shares and i look forward to seeing um continued success for this company well let's see how shareholders react when the offer actually opens on the 31st will they be snapped up or will people shy away because of the price i think jody Ann's point is the one though that pe of 8.5 that is the one that people should pay attention to yeah. let's look at the manufacturing and distribution sector now because they had a tremendous year in 2020 when the financial sector was down m d companies were up 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 people were buying up food supplies stocking up on toilet paper and all kinds of stuff <laughs> uh, has that continued into 2021 Dwayne? absolutely kalila uh you you know that a lot of financials have been coming out recently and uh, about 10 different manufacturers slash distribution co distribution companies all saw an increase in their net profit you understand so on a year-over-year -year basis regardless of the pandemic we found that the manufacturing and distribution companies have been resilient and this is something i've mentioned on previous episodes as well they've been consistent they've seen growth i mean gk had a record year um uh, salada foods so uh, i think over 400 percent in profit because we, we we have ours we have our ownership in salada as well so the market has been particularly exciting for that industry um there are a lot of players i think the junior market in particular we saw a lot of significant year-over-year -year growth in earnings for the junior market listings i think in particular fontana they saw a 56 percent increase in uh net profits so, I mean, when we're looking at the local market, when we're looking at companies that are poised for even further growth, the manufacturing and distribution industry has not failed at all. And then remember, we're not even in the post pandemic phase as yet. You know, uh, the hotel industry, tourism, I should say, uh, is still slowly opening up. And with the increase of tourists actually coming into the island, you can anticipate that, you know, these different venues will require more from the same manufacturers and distributors so i mean if we're in the middle of a pandemic and we can see them be so profitable just imagine what the boom might mean for them once everything has kind of opened up a bit more so uh, the positive there's a positive outlook for that industry and i'm very impressed with the the performance thus far but at the same time, Jody Ann, we've been seeing in the past few months where food prices have been going up. So chicken gone up, flour gone up. Yeah. So uh, stepping up, yeah. stepping up, everything. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> Jody Ann, do you think that will have an impact on growth in these particular sectors? Do you think people are likely to cut back because of uh, the rise in food prices? Um, I mean, yes and no. I mean, food is a, a staple. It's something that you have to eat food. And we re do realize that particularly for listed manufacturing companies that they have in 2020 improved on their margins. So when it is that you look at a gross margin or a profit margin relative to 2019, there were big improvements. So we see that those moving up by you know at least one percentage points for some of the bigger names. And so even if it is that there are are higher prices that they you know they have learned some skill sets in the pandemic of cutting costs that will translate and if you note for quarter one those results actually are still pretty good and they are comparing quarter one to quarter one last year when it only had one month 
in 2020 of impact from COVID. And even in this current first quarter, Q1, March quarter of 2021, you are seeing that there were higher restrictions, you know, because of COVID, you know, that the government would have implemented. And so it would have had some negative impact and these manufacturing companies were still able to churn out higher profits. So it's it's really speaking to how it is that they are managing some of the, imp the input costs, how they're managing surviving in that framework work in a new way of doing things. So it will have may have some impact um, in terms of higher prices, but overall the companies have been doing solid and they're learning and they're becoming resilient. Yeah. Now, speaking of commodities prices increasing, let's look at what's going on in the United States. Keisha, there's a gas shortage uh, what's the impact of that so far and why? So what's been happening in the U.S. with gas shortage has been extremely interesting. Colonial Pipeline, which is the biggest fuel pipeline in the U.S. East Coast, they were hacked recently, meaning that a company held them at ransom. The CEO was asked to pay roughly $5 million to receive a debugging tool that would unlock his computer system, which was locked up by these hackers. Because of that, the company had to shut down production because they didn't want the malware to infect their entire computer system. And so because of that, we had no shortage in supply. Mm -hmm. That had a domino effect because everyone started rushing to the pumps from Florida right up to Virginia. People were scrambling to get gas because they weren't sure how long this lockdown would last for. And so what we saw happening then is that at the pumps, price were, prices were increasing. They were around $2.99 per gallon, which is the highest that it's been since 2014. This was very interesting, but it calls into light the fragility of the overall U.S. Um, infrastructure. Now, a lot of these companies are private, and that's the reason why the level of security has not been on more of a standard or a higher standard generally. So this calls into play the need for stronger cybersecurity in the U.S. generally. And Biden recently issued a new executive order and a $2 billion fund geared toward improving the cyber in infrastructure for these companies in the oil sector. It also is an interesting point for clean energy, which is one of the areas of focus for him as well. And so clean energy companies, which have been doing very well so far, in the stock market, they will continue to do well because there's no specific funding available for these technologies to be used in, in companies in the US. So very interesting times ahead to see how that will play out in terms of the shift into more cleaner or green technology. So mm -hmm. when did all of this happen with the hacking and stuff? A couple of weeks ago, and it was yes, all over so the news. Yeah. yeah, everyone was, you had long lines at the pumps. It was, it was interesting to see it all pay off. Interestingly, on top of that, the CEO did pay the ransom. And <laughs> so, so is paid... that why gas prices gone up here in Jamaica? Because that's yes. the prices them look ridiculous, man. <laughs> <laughs> it had a ripple effect here locally as well. But guess how the ransom was paid? That is 4.4. Yes, 75 <laughs> Bitcoin. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's <laughs> how he paid the ransom. It was, it was, uh, that's really and these people, these hackers and stuff tend to favor cryptocurrencies. So that's not surprising. Yes. Uh, and interestingly as well, Money Mondays JA this week is on the very topic of gas prices. So you guys check that out. Uh, so let's look at the, the local economy. So we've been speaking about gas prices. We've been speaking about commodities prices. Uh, but there's an update on the overall economy. The Bank of Jamaica, BOJ, recently had a press conference. jodi and you were tuned in. What are the highlights? All right. So just, I mean, just to loop you in, you know, in terms of prices, we're seeing that we're that increase in oil price as well as the grain price. So, I mean, oil is not the only commodity that is increasing. And those are going to have some impact on our inflation locally. So we're not seeing it necessarily in April, but once we get to May, we're going to see some impact in terms of inflation just based on the fact that prices for oil and grains are increasing. So, I mean, I think there was a news article that said, you know, chicken prices are going to fly. I mean, you know, that all links back to commodity price, grains increasing, meaning that animal feed is going to be higher, which therefore links back to chicken costs getting a bit higher. 
Um, BOJ is saying that, you know, they're anticipating for the fiscal year to end 2022 that we'll have GDP growth of around 5 to 8%, which is higher than our typical used to, you know, low levels of GDP growth. And this is really based on a comparison to our low base. So remember, 2020, we were really, really down. And when it is now that you're looking at, you know, improvements or increase in productive activity in this year, then that's good. Um, they're pointing to things such as the reopening and, you know, better source markets. So when you think of tourism, you know, with countries such as the U.S. rolling out their vaccination programs and those being successful in the U.K., then we can anticipate to see increases in terms of tourist arrivals, which would then impact our economy and give us a little bit more boost. So it is very positive news coming from the BOJ in terms of their projections for growth, you know, within the next year to two fiscal years. But how is the BOJ reacting to this expected increase in inflation? Because that is one of their core mandates to, to kind of control inflation. And we're already trending towards the top of their band. They want it to be between four and six percent. We've been at about mm -hmm. five point something percent. So if food prices and oil prices, gas prices go up significantly, which it seems that they will, that we might be looking to trend out of that target band. Right. So have they? how are they reacting to that? Um, well, what that indicated is that for that the next 12 months, they anticipate that it's going to be around 4.8%. So there is oh. on one side increase in you know, processed food as well as increase in oils. But on the other hand, if it is that we have favorable weather conditions, then we could have you know, a big supply in terms of local produce, so, you know, those local agricultural products, yam, and, you know, your sweet potato and stuff like that could be in larger supply, which could mean lower prices on that end, which would counterbalance that increase that you would have in terms of processed food and oil prices impact on transportation and other inputs. Um, so it, it's it, there is a risk to inflation becoming high based on continued increase in commodity prices. Um, but once it is that we continue to have favorable weather, so fingers crossed, um, then we can, you know, expect that our agricultural locally will be producing and we should see those prices remaining fairly muted. Well, let's hope so, because we can't take too much hits from too many sides. We're still dealing with COVID, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And oh, that, gosh, that, yeah. the hurricane season is about to start. June, no? June to November. Oh, boy. Yep. <laughs> all right. Yes. Yes. Pray for us all. Thank you so much, Jody and Keisha, Dwayne. Yes, right. pleasure. Thank you. This segment of Taking Stock, The Analysts, was brought to you by Ideal Portfolio Services. That's our show for this week. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and of course, share with a friend. Also subscribe to our newsletter at kalilorenolds.com newsletter and turn on those post notifications so that you can be the first to see all my other features. We want to help people learn more about money so we can all get this money together. So this week on Money Mondays JA, why are gas prices so high? I'll break it down. And on Money Moves, JA, get your passport to export. Benchmark QMS is back to give us the steps. Now follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Kalila Ray and follow at Taking Stock JA on Instagram. If you want to connect with the analysts this week, check the description box below for their contact information. Also, visit our website, kalilareynolds.com, for financial information you can use however you like it. Watch, listen, or read. Now tell a friend about taking stock because what? Investing is the new sexy. So let's make it cool to talk about money. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Stay safe. Let's get this money. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.